Hello ladies and gentlemen of the Wasteland, it's me host of Project, and today, as you can see, I've got a collection of photos here. Um, pretty much, the idea is, I'm going to, sorry for the clicking and moving, but I'm going to show you guys how I can you know, manipulate photos and how I do it personally. So as you guys can see, I'm in Lightroom at the moment, I'm just sort of choosing the picture I want. Okay, so this one, this one looks pretty good. Um, there is some problems with it. You can adjust these. I like to sort of just boost the shadows so you can get some more detail. Um, for this image though, it seems like maybe a little bit brighter would be nice. Um, I always crush the blacks and I sometimes boost the whites. It really depends if it's too destructive and I tend to not do it, but we're going to keep it for this one. You don't really need to mess with the exposure too much, um, if at all. Um, like I said, for the shadows, don't need too much of the shadows. Highlights, obviously, don't need much at all. Actually, none. Go bring these white backs just a bit more. Okay, so now with all these settings done, we're actually going to fix our lens. Now, this is pretty much all it's going to do is it's going to detect what lens we're using and sort of adjust it. You can see it sort of had a fisheye effect at the beginning, but now it doesn't. It's back to where it should be. Um, I did shoot this on my 50mm 1.8 STM. Um, you can also mess around with the curves in Lightroom. I'm not a big fan of doing that. I only take care of the main part of lighting. Not too much, just sort of just basic light work. So now we're going to export our photo. Uh, we're just going to have to just choose location, a specific folder. I'm just going to drop it uh, back in here in my... No, probably not in my media actually. I'll go jump in my networked media. Ooh. Okay, so... We're going to make a new folder real quick. Just so... Because um, this is for content. And export. So now if we head to bridge, which I'm just going to... Have to quickly drag over here. As you can see, this is all the content. The, our original content. So now we just got to go back to our desktop. Now, do be warned, I'm actually sort of watching this um, after I've already recorded, so I'm going to give you guys a basic idea of what's happening. But yeah, here's the image, so we're just going to double click on it. You can see your settings down there that I use for the camera if you guys really want to know. I'll find a way to put the settings on there for you, but here we go. This is the edited after Lightroom. Oh, sorry for the sound. There we go. So, I always like to duplicate my layers simply because, you know, it's so much easier to work with. Oh, it's going to make a lot of sound. And that way you sort of have a backup. So, yeah, that layer one is going to be our backup. Now, sometimes you can make this the backup, but I meant to write background. So that's the layer we'll be working with most. That layer there, that's our backup layer. That's sort of the layer we're going to use just in case if this layer is you know, too broken. Now I'm going to start off with some, I'm guessing curves. I don't know what I do here. Yeah, curves. I always like to boost the bottom left. That sort of gives it this like you know light feel. Now if you drop it just next to it, it gives you that uh film look. I I personally think. Uh, we're just going to sort of muck around here on the different lines. The idea is you adjust on the different lines so how you see fit until you get the you know brightness, contrast, etc. I like to sort of just tone it up a bit to white. Um, it's probably just a little bit too much. Yeah, there we go. So of course, this image is sort of meant to be a little bit darker. It's meant to show the uh, society um, and how we should be versing society, like how should we be going against society. So I'm sort of going to adjust it so we get to that point. Now his shirt's a little bit off in the white, so I might just edit that up a bit. There we go. Okay. So you don't want too much of a curve because if it becomes too much, it A becomes unrealistic and B, it just doesn't look good. It tends to have a like completely matte feel or it has the uh just like a weird color problem. As you see here, we're going to slightly move the curve, so it sort of just fix some of the color up from the, uh, well, 
the curves. So this is the original image. Now before we do anything, I just I remember realizing that the shirts of Sean and Bronco are actually way too different compared to uh, Josh and Chris. And since we want their shirts to be as dark as possible and Rams to be white as possible, I'm gonna have to select and you know sort of change the color of each shirt. I do this by getting the brush tool. So it's just there. And of course you don't need a big size, you just need to get just enough size. And as you can see it's all black, you know. So control Z. And up here, if you look, oh sorry. If I press Q a couple of times, you see it says quick mask and it switches to RGB. If you put it on quick mask, it will give you that red look. I like to put a little bit of hardness on there so it doesn't look too faded. Just resize my brush and then we just start doing this. So I'm just going to speed this bit up for you guys. But as you guys can see, that's all I did. I just sort of made this a little bit easier to work with. And I did it for Bronco as well. Uh, it's skipping frames. Come on. So here we go, here's the final sort of selecting of his shirt. Now that we've got both shirts, as you can see they're all red, but if you press Q, so see up here again, quick mask and RGB, if you switch it to RGB, it's going to do a selection. Now it's going to select the entire picture, but not their shirt, so we want to inverse it. Now we've only got their shirt selected. So now that we only got their shirt selected, we want to go to our fill type, and usually I pick solid. So this is the color fill, and you want to make it a clipping mask because that's what it is. So now we've made it black. We're going to just put it on an overlay. So the idea is it'll basically put it on their shirts, but it will not affect it too much. It just sort of like. It's a light film over it, basically. And we're just going to change the opacities until we feel it's about right. For this, I'm sort of going off by Chris's shirt um, and Sean. But, you know, I, I look at uh, Josh, so I sort of mix the two. So here's the original and here's the new. As you can see, society, we've all got the same shirts. And the one guy in the middle has got the white shirt. Now, I was originally thinking about shoes being a problem. But then I realized you can't really change a rainbow shoe. So thank you, Sean, for that. <laughs> so, again, this is the original. I've sort of just merged the uh, clippy mask and the layer together. Because now we're going to do the actual filters. So, yeah. So now we've added the color look up and the curves. So you can see what it looks like so far. However, I feel like it's probably a bit too much. So I'm just going to sort of check, muck around with the opacity for a little bit, just until I get that right feel. Okay, so next up, we're just going to sort of muck around. I think we might go with color, uh, color changer, color balance, and we're just going to give a little bit more blues to the mid-tones. It's sort of a nice little cinematic feel. It's a little bit more of a cool tone. Highlights, we're just going to go with yellow, just sort of to you know, interact with the blue a little bit and probably just give it a bit more red and blue for the uh, shadows, there we go now you can see the sort of difference, it's sort of just done a little bit of color correction sort of got it to a point where we think it's, you know it's not too much of warm colors being used, it's a little bit cooler if you want you can work with selective colors I tend to only do this for uh, main features, so you can see his pants down there, um, it's sort of just changing the colors, I like to sort of just, I do this with all my photos as you guys can see, but I do like to sort of get that color change. It is interacting with Sean's shoes though, so that may be a little bit off, but we're just going to go with it. So there we go, we're just sort of just getting that color right. I wanted to make him as bright as possible, simply because, you know, if he's meant to sort of go away from what everyone else looks like, this way it'd be easier. Now blacks, I'm thinking I might want to make blacks a little bit darker. Um, you can change the tones. As you can see I've got much more of a blue, grittier tone. 
and this is sort of like it doesn't really affect ramen too much like um so when you look at ramen it's not as gritty it's you know a little bit more brighter so everyone else looks a bit more gritty so it sort of gives it that better color so you go with selective color we've sort of given back the blue from the red and like i said it just made it a little bit more gritty Okay, so next up, which one are we using? We're using hue and balance. I like to just remove some saturation, not too much. Uh, too much color can sort of be distracting from the point of the actual image. Brightness, of course, just increase the brightness by a little bit. Don't really need to do too much. For this image, I might drop it and just sort of drop the exposure a bit. Yeah, about there it looks good. So there you go, as you can see, it just sort of dimmed out the uh, mid-tones and the highlights. So this was our original image. As you guys can see it is definitely a little bit more different now. Um, I'll just show you guys the actual final you know, images. So this was before Lightroom altogether. After we chucked in Lightroom, did some lens correction and some light correction. We got this and then for the final one we added some more filters got some more color and we got this so i hope you guys enjoyed this i'll catch you guys later